This is my harvester ant colony. Despite starting from a tiny little tube, over the past 30 days, the colony has expanded to an entirely new level. Over the month, I've documented their lifestyle, including them hunting, building shelter, eating, and more. I even introduced special predators and prey in order to simulate real world scenarios in the wild. To understand how this all started, we gotta go back to day one, where my entire colony was confined to a single tube. But while they may be small, they are already extremely powerful. To demonstrate this, I'm putting a live mealworm inside. The colony immediately went into defense mode, and the workers swarmed the worm. While half of the ants used their mandibles to crush the worm's exoskeleton, the other half gathered around the queen and larvae to protect them from the potential threat. Using their stingers, they injected a potent venom into the worm to paralyze it. The mealworm stood no chance, and its only purpose now was to serve as food for my colony over the next few days. But I could tell the colony was getting way too big for this tiny tube, and they were even trying to break their way out. So I figured now is a good time to expand them into a bigger home. This is a hybrid nest, and it's gonna be their new home. So I connected vinyl tubing, and soon enough, one of the ants started to walk towards the new nest. After discovering it, she traveled back to her home to tell the rest of the colony about the newfound land. And slowly, over the rest of the day, everyone moved into the nest. I let the colony get used to their new home for a few days, but by day six, I was bored of just looking at the ants in a plastic nest. So I wanted to build their first real world habitat with live prey and predators, a desert. For the build, I built up the substrate starting with a drainage layer, and then I added in a mix of sand and coconut fiber for the floor. I finally added in rocks, wood, and cacti to make it, you know, a desert. The desert was complete, so I connected the ants with another vinyl tube and quickly a couple workers ventured into the uncharted territory. In order to give a reason for the colony to explore further into this desert, I sprinkled some of their favorite food around the habitat, dandelion seeds. And let's just say those seeds made the ants start swarming into the desert and everyone was doing their part to take food back to the queen. But one of the ants traveled a little too far into the desert and came across this little pit. Thinking it was nothing, he made the worst decision of his life and walked into it. Something was attacking and the ant could do nothing about it. You see, earlier that day I had placed ant lion larvae into the desert. These guys create little holes in the sand and wait for an unlucky ant like this guy to stumble in. But this ant wasn't going to die without a fight and grabbed on with his mandibles. The ant lion was actually losing and didn't even have a grip on the ant. But the ant lion was smarter and used his ability to burrow and pull the ant under the sand, never to be seen again. <laughs> While the ants liked the desert, they had to be careful to avoid the deadly predators. Anyways, I wanted to add a desert themed prey into this habitat to give the ants a solid protein source. So let me introduce you to Mexican jumping beans. <laughs> These guys may just look like giant seeds, but in reality, they move. That's because inside of each of these beans is a little caterpillar that would eventually turn into a beautiful moth. But these caterpillars will not be turning into moths because the ants are going to eat them. Now, to be honest, I thought the ants would just swarm the jumping beans and dig their way into them, but in reality, they didn't really react to them. So I had to expose the juicy prey inside by cutting them open myself and putting them right next to some of the colony. And well, it's safe to say that the ants enjoyed the soft membrane caterpillars that they could split in half with their mandibles. Okay, that's actually pretty brutal if I'm being honest. The colony slowly started to build up their food supply at their home base with seeds and the caterpillars. And of course, the excess food led the queen to start laying more and more eggs. And after only a few days, the colony's population was getting ready to boom. So to prepare for all the new ants, I'm gonna build another entire habitat for the ants to explore with all the new predators and prey. So in this weirdly shaped terrarium, I'm building a rainforest. Honestly, it's a little complicated on how I built it, so I'm just gonna show you these sped up clips, and uh, there we go. I'm gonna first fill up this rainforest with some Kentucky bluegrass seeds, 
And then I've also got some flightless fruit flies for the ants to get even more food. Of course, where there's food, the ants will venture. And within a few minutes, the ants were swarming their new habitat. The flightless fruit flies were the perfect size for the ants to hunt. And literally single ants could bring them back to the nest. But this wasn't just the food-filled dreamland. There are predators here, and this ant is about to figure out the hard way. With one wrong turn, the ant makes its way towards a carnivorous Venus flytrap. The ant slightly stepped onto it, not knowing its life could end at any moment. Foolishly, it fell for the bait, as Venus flytraps produce a sweet nectar to attract insects. As the ant was busy inspecting the plant, the flytrap slowly started to close its mouth, leaving no chance of escape for the ant. You can see the ant slightly moving around inside, but over the coming days, the Venus flytrap will produce a type of acid that will dissolve the poor ant into nothing but nutrients. But carnivorous plants weren't the only thing the ants had to watch out for, as I'm about to introduce a fierce predator into the rainforest. Something menacing with excellent eyesight and sharp venomous fangs. Everyone, please welcome Jeremy, my jumping spider. Aww. I haven't fed Jeremy in days, so I expect him to instantly start eating the ants. Wait, wait, what? Okay, it turns out Jeremy is a little bit camera shy and just instantly went to hide in some plants. I tried to push him out so I could film him eating some of the ants, but he just went and hid at another place where I couldn't even see him. Well, uh, Jeremy is in this rainforest, and when he does decide to come out, these ants better be careful. Yeah. It was now day 23, and today I wanted to simulate some natural disasters across not only the rainforest, but also the desert to see how the ants will react. Of course, over in the desert, I'm going to create a sandstorm. So I brought over my hairdryer and turned it on. The sand started to fly everywhere, and the ants that were out exploring had to try their best to cling onto the grains of sand that they could. But over in the rainforest, fog had started to roll in, and a thunderstorm appeared out of nowhere. This rain will play a vital role in making sure the ant colony has enough water to sustain their entire colony. It was nearing the end of the 30 day simulation and today on day 28, I wanted to see how the ants would respond to an intruder in their home nest. The intruder I'm gonna put in the nest is this dubia roach. So I removed the glass and put the roach in. Immediately, it crawled down to the bottom of the nest where there were no ants. Now, to be honest, I thought the ants would instantly start swarming the roach, but it took a few minutes before even the first ant had contact with it. The ant got super scared and fell on his back, but the roach was just as scared and it ran all the way to the exit of the nest. He then crawled out into the desert outworld, never to be seen again. Thankfully, the queen was left unharmed and the colony got to live another day. Over the past 30 days, the ants went from a tiny tube to a thriving nest with multiple ecosystems. Although some of the ants were lost to predators, the survivors were able to prosper until day 30. By the way, this is only my fifth ever video, so if you enjoyed it, please subscribe as it means a lot to new creators like me. I'll be making more videos on these ants in the future, so comment a name for the colony and some ideas. Thanks for watching.